What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of you all who will, you know I appreciate it. Also, make sure you go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speak TV. Make sure you subscribe over there. And when you subscribe, hit that little bell next to the subscribe button so you get my notifications when I drop a new video. Now, let's get into this topic. All right, y'all. Now, this story is coming out of Toledo, Ohio, and the young lady you all see on the screen is Tanise Temple, a sex trafficking victim of several Toledo, Ohio pastors. And I've talked about those pastors on this show. You all know them. Uh, Pastor Anthony Haynes, who was supposed to be her father, spiritual father, but turned around to pass her around sexually to some of his other minister friends, such as Bishop Cordell Jenkins and Prophet. Hmm. Prophet Kenneth Butler. Now, Pastor Anthony Haynes and Cordell Jenkins, they are serving life sentences in prison, and Pastor Prophet Kenneth Butler is serving 17 and a half years. Not only that, Pastor Cordell Jenkins' wife and Anthony Haynes' wife are serving uh, jail prison time as well, and so is Anthony Haynes' stepdaughter for tampering with evidence. So, out of everything that has happened to this young woman, she is still the last one standing. She has the victory in this case. She went against giants. These pastors, especially Bishop Cordell Jenkins, he had some strong ties in that community to the NAACP, to, the, uh, to Marvin Winans, and P Pastor Marvin Winans, all the people he's affiliated with, because his ministry was under Pastor Marvin Winans. He was part of that denomination. So this young lady went against all of that and stood up in court and everyone who victimized her, everyone that abused her are now doing time in prison. So I'm going to let you all hear what she has to say and I'll be back with the rest of my commentary and you all know me, I'm Dawson and I won't hold back. Story as inspiration and know that you can get through it because I got through it and know that you are not alone. Denise Temple went on national TV today sharing her story. She was the sex trafficking victim of several Toledo pastors. Good evening, I'm Jamie Innes. Ryan is on assignment. She went on the Tamron Hall show for her first on-camera interview since her abuser was sentenced. Denise sat down with NBC24's Sophia Paraconi. She's live at the University of Toledo with her message. Sophia? Jamie, Tanise Temple was only 13 years old when her pastor, Anthony Haynes, began to sexually abuse her and force her to have sex with anyone he chose. But now she's sharing her story, not only to help other women survive, but to thrive. When I was like 13 years old, I was introduced to a pastor as a father figure, and he sex trafficked me for three years. Tanise Temple thought she found a father figure in her pastor, Anthony Haynes. He did take on that role. He did say that he was going to be my protector and stuff. And so there was a lot of things at home that was unsafe. So I did end up living with the pastor and his family. Until he started sexually abusing her. Every day coming home just expecting that I'm just going to have to have sex with him and anybody else that he um, threw my way to have sexual activity with. The abuse and trafficking lasted over three years until she received a phone call from Anthony's stepdaughter while at school. She basically told me to consent to it, to say that it never happened. And I started crying. That's when her school counselor noticed something was off. She took me to our officer at Penna Career Center, and they reached out to FBI, and from there, the case was just... The pastor's wife and stepdaughter pled guilty to witness tampering Tuesday, and Haynes is locked up for life. This case and me just going through such tough abuse have, like, it been controlling my life for so long. I'm actually is just at peace. Now, Tanise is making sure her story is heard. She shared her journey with the nation on Wednesday. Did he try to justify this in any way? Did he, did you see the grooming starting as they refer to it when someone is a predator and they have a young person, they're trying to groom them? Grooming is how children and young adults fall victim to sex trafficking. It's manipulation over time befriending, gaining someone's trust, getting them to participate in their own victimization along with you, 
by trusted, very safe looking people. Using Tanisa's past of rape and molestation, Haynes groomed the then 13 year old. That's very common for kids that are trafficked into the sex trade, they're vulnerable. But she's not letting that stop her from using her voice today. I would rather sacrifice myself to tell my story to help give courage to another girl that I may meet someday or I may not meet, but I know that they're touched. All right, y'all, let's go in. Now, first, I want to say to Tanise Temple, you are on your way to do awesome things in life. And she's already started. She's in university now. She is uh, going to be a social worker from what I read. So definitely get out here on the field with the rest of the social workers, the rest of the community activists, all the people who are the unsung heroes trying to make the world a better place. And this is definitely a light at the end of the tunnel this is something that i am glad to see that she is doing because some victims remain quiet and because these pastors as i said in other videos they had you know connections to you know real elite people in the community and a lot of people did not want the news reporters who were black to talk about this or any other people. And I know that she faced a lot by just coming out and saying what happened to her. And, you know, just congratulations to you for that. And now using your voice to speak out and then not to hide. She's uh, she's in, on Tamron Hall. She's at the news people saying, I'm going to use my voice to help other victims not only survive, but to thrive throughout all of this madness. So definitely Congratulations to you, uh, Tanise Temple. Now, when Tanise was on Tamron Hall, they talked about everything she went through and how these pastors groomed her. And they were showing pictures of Tanise now and then, and they showed this picture of her at 13 years old with some of her friends. And I know many of you may say, well, look how she's dressed, look at all of that. Let me tell you something. When kids have been through so much at a young age and they are put in situations where they're forced to be grown, that's why you have some of these 12 year olds and 13 year olds, they're acting grown, they're acting fast, and you're just saying, oh, they fast, she too fast, and he acting like this. A lot of times those children have been touched at early ages. And these adults have put them in adult situation as children. No child should have to go through that. And I keep telling you all all the time, when it comes to young girls, we all want to go to bed and you know, put them on TV, everything else, all this. But when the boys get molested and raped, y'all are silent. Nothing happens. And I tell you women and you mothers and you grandmothers and you daddies and you uncles, it's going to come back and haunt you. Because when you marry these men, when your daughters marry these men, when your niece marry these men, then the problems begin to arise. When they acting out and all this kind of stuff and they don't know, they've never told anybody about the trauma that happened to them when they were a child. And so when they get with you, either woman can do it too. They take it out all on you. Now, people don't like when I talk about this, but I told y'all, y'all going to have to leave my show because I'm not changing. This is my stuff. If you don't like it, go where you need to go at and get your whatever you need, the, flu the little fluffy messages you need to get. But I don't have none of that over here. We're going to speak the truth and be real and raw. There are a lot of you all who have gone through stuff. And you all know there are people who write me all the time. Dawson, my mama knew I was getting molested. My, my daddy knew this. They knew every time they dropped me off this place. I tell you all the time the young boy wrote me. He said, Dawson, can you do a story about mothers who love the Lord so much? And my mom was such a religious fanatic, but she left me many places and situations where people she allowed me to get abused. This man wrote this to me. There are people in their 60s, I told y'all they old enough to be my mama and my daddy, write me all the time. And that fuels me to do what I do. This should have never happened to a 13 year old. None of this stuff should happen. But we have these people in positions of power. They're not pastors, they're predators. They're predators in the pulpit. And they are after little boys, they after girls, they after some of the men, they after some of the young women. And no one really wants to talk about this stuff seriously because, oh no, not my pastor. Oh no, well you making us look bad. Oh, well you, oh, give me a scripture, give me this. No, 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 no. Won't you get you a grown man or a grown woman and do whatever you need to do and leave the kids alone? That's what I want you to get. No matter how these children may dress, no matter if they look like they're older, you as the adult, the responsibility is going to fall on you. The law is going to look at you. 
Well, Dawson, I don't believe it. You ain't got to believe it. Look at all these cases. All of the people involved in this stuff over the span of three years that it took place, all of these people are serving prison time now. Prominent pastors in Toledo, Ohio, their wives, Laura Lloyd Jenkins, she had a, she was over a budget of what was almost a million dollars for city employees. This lady, she had a, a big job in Toledo, Ohio, working for the city and then working for children who were at risk. And how did she end up in this? Because her husband was in this and then she wanted to cover up for him. Y'all got to think. You got to think. You can't be taking up for your family all the time and try. Oh, well, I want my cousin. I know my cousin may have done it. I know you might have. No, 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 cuz, man, come on, bruh. It's just some stuff you got to go down for. Because there ain't no, oh, I, I, you know, I ain't going to do it. You know, I'm telling y'all, some people won't harm their kids. But they'll harm other people, kids. And sometimes, not sometimes, most of the time, kids who are in foster care, the kids who are out on the street, the kids who people, a lot of parents, fathers and mothers, they're not taking care of their kids. They just let their children run the street and roam the streets and don't tend to their kids. They are they are open prey for wolves in society. Especially many times in these churches and these educational institutions, it's tons of things like this that happen all the time. Y'all, we got to keep talking about this. We got to. And hopefully you all catch the message, uh, get the momentum, take care of your kids and, you know, look out for others as well, because everybody does not have good parental support. Not all of these children have it. And when I worked for Department of Children and Family, it was so stressful to me because I really felt like I was these kids' father. Seriously. And it, it just got too much. I'm like, come on now, there's like 30 kids on your caseload. I can't do all this now because it's just too much white kids, Hispanic kids, black kids. N parents who just dropped the ball. And a lot of those kids were sexually abused. And then when you as a, uh, a DCF uh, a social worker have to look at these parents and say, look, I know you want your child back, but you're, you, you're trying to skip over, take all these parenting classes and all this kind of stuff to get your child back in court. But you're not dealing with the fact that you took a man over your child. You let a man harm your children. You let a woman or a relative do this to your sons. And you did nothing. Oh, for my man. Because you got self-esteem issues. You had to have somebody. You didn't care about your daughter. You didn't care about your son. Because you were on drugs. And you sold them for crack. You sold them for coke. Oh yeah, it happens. These kids. And I'm going to keep talking about this. I don't care. Like I say, y'all know what to do if you want to. These kids who suffer. And they're suffering in silence. I will use my platform to speak out for the victims for real. Until next time, it's your guy Dawson. Y'all take care of yourself and each other. And I don't care who it is. And let me tell y'all this before I leave. There are a lot of people on the internet who have large followings. And I want to nip this in the bud. I have a large following. I have 100,000 100, whatever on Dawson, Denise. And then we have almost whatever, 60,000 or whatever, 50-some thousand over here on Dawson Speak. I haven't looked at the numbers or whatnot. But look here. When it comes to you speaking out about things that happen to you, don't you let no vlogger, no blogger, don't you let no celebrity, nobody, all these people jumping on YouTube tell you not to speak out. You speak out when things are done to you in religious institution and in educational institutions. Don't you dare let somebody, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it was Oprah or Tyler Perry coming out. You better open your mouth. You are significant and you have a right to speak out. They may not care about you, but you better care about you. Now, I mean that. I'm serious. Y'all better speak out and stand up for yourself. I don't care who, I don't care what they say. Well, you know, they got 100,000, they got 500, they got a million. I don't care. Until next time, y'all take care of yourself and each other. Peace.